Hi, my name's Brendan Malone and you're listening to The Edge of Reason, the podcast which explores important issues but doesn't take all day about it. Earlier this week there was an article published in the New Zealand Herald entitled Age of Chivalry Put to the Sword. Basically the article suggested that chivalry, the idea of men uh, showing respect, courtesy, care, protectiveness, etc, etc, etc for women in our culture, uh, has, or women in general really, uh, has basically now long gone and not only has it long gone, but in actual fact, chivalry, according to one of the so-called experts in this article, is a mask. In fact, let me quote her now. She's a feminist um, uh, lecturer from Auckland University. Uh, she says, it's a kind of mask for deep inequality. Uh, and she, in fact, she said that the declining tradition in which men showed masculinity in their relationships, so this idea that less men are actually being masculine, is a good thing in her books. Well, I would like to suggest to you that it is not a good thing at all. In fact, it's not a good thing for men. It's one of the ways in which our culture is failing men and boys, and it's not a good thing for women either. It doesn't benefit anybody when men stop acting like authentic men and stop acting with chivalry in their conduct towards women. Chivalry is not the same thing as inequality or abuse or looking down on a woman. Chivalry is simply the act of a man doing something or acting in some way towards a woman to show that he has respect, care and concern for her. Now anybody who says that that kind of behaviour is wrong or it's bad or it's outdated or it's nonsensical, I would suggest to you is not really grounded in reality. They're living in an alternate reality. Uh, the same day that this particular article was published, another news website in New Zealand ran the story about Arnold Schwarzenegger's new Tell All biography in which he talks about his life and particularly about his marriage uh, to Maria Shriver and his infidelity, numerous infidelities and the affairs that he had. And you look at this book uh, and, and what, what he what he talks about and, and how he describes the way he lived out his life and his marriage. Uh, he, he fathered a, a child with his housekeeper, for those of you who don't know, during the marriage. He says that he talks about numerous affairs, infidelity and the likes um, and the fact that he, he, he actually basically... Uh, lived a life of, of secrecy even within his marriage and he had this, uh, this ability to put his emotions on what he called deep freeze and that led him to keep many secrets from his wife Maria Shriver. In fact at one point when he, he talks about, there's an interesting point where he talks about the fact that he realised uh, that the housekeeper the baby or the son of the housekeeper was actually his own son as a result of their infidelity and uh, he said when he realised that he thought well I better start putting some money away. He still didn't uh, own up to his wife what had been going on, he sort of thought, well, I better start putting some money away because, and I'm quoting here, I'm going to fulfill my responsibilities. Well, no offence to Mr. Schwarzenegger, um, it's one thing to be a bodybuilder, but it's another thing to understand what that statement actually means when you say, I am going to fulfill my responsibilities. I would have thought that one of the first and primary and most important responsibilities if you are a married man and you have committed an act of infidelity is to actually be honest, to humble yourself, admit your mistake and go to your wife and be honest and communicate with her and say, this is what I have done. I've messed up. I've failed to respect the commitment that I've made to you. I have violated our marriage in a very serious way. And and here here it is. It's all on the table. And I hopefully he would also say, I am sorry, truly sorry for what I've done. How can we uh, restore the situation? How can we bring about healing to this this brokenness? But his idea was, well, I'd put some money away and I wouldn't, I'd still keep it secret from my wife. Now, I, I would suggest to you, if, if you were asking women what sort of man do they want, Women, if they're honest with you, are not going to say, well, yeah, I wouldn't mind ending up in a marriage with a guy like Arnold Schwarzenegger who keeps a ton of secrets, who doesn't communicate properly with me, who lives in his own world, who doesn't act with chivalry towards me, uh, has affairs, uh, and, 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 and I know nothing about this. No one wants to live. Uh, any woman who is, is, uh, is honest with you would not say, yeah, that's the kind of husband, that's the kind of relationship that I'm looking for. And I think if you were honest, if anyone was honest you and, and, and you said to them, well, you know, what kind of man do you want or are you looking for? Are you looking for a man who, when he looks at you, thinks chivalry is dead and, and when he looks at you, he just sees another one of the lads, another one of the boys to joke around with? 
or perhaps a man who looks at you and when he looks at you he says, well, I don't see any need for chivalry. I don't see the distinction between masculinity and femininity. I don't value my masculinity. I don't see it as being that important at all. I don't value your femininity either. I don't think that's important. In fact, when I look at you, I simply see a genderless, androgynous sort of being much like myself and therefore I'll go first through that doorway, thank you. I don't think any woman is asking or looking or seeking out that kind of a relationship or that kind of man to be in relationship. If they were, why is it that that the likes of of um, of Pride and Prejudice and 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 other you know similar romantic works, romantic classics, are still so widely read in droves and by younger and newer generations of women? Why is it that when women go and seek out a movie experience, the majority of them go and look for romantic comedies or romantic dramas, uh, things that connect with them on an emotional level? They don't go looking for uh, die screaming with sharp objects in your head part three or um, attack of the killer mutant zombies. That's the kind of thing that us blokes do. Why? Because men and women are different and there are d- important differences between the two of us. And I think our masculinity, the gift of our masculinity as men is one of those important differences. And, and chivalry is the act of taking the gift of our masculinity and turning it outwards and using it to serve somebody else, to serve the woman in our community, in our lives, by treating them with the respect, the care, the protection, all those kind of things that they rightly deserve because they're women and because we as men, if we want to be great men, need to learn how to serve and care for other people. Um, recently I was uh, reading the book The Demise of Guys How We're Failing Boys and What We Can Do About It and and the authors make this great statement I think it's it's really typical of what's going on in our culture and very important for this particular situation they say this society wants guys to be upstanding proactive citizens who take responsibility for themselves who work with others to improve their communities and nation as a whole the irony is that society is not giving the support means or places for these young men to even be motivated or interested in aspiring to these things. And that's exactly what this whole Death of Chivalry article is about for me. It's about someone saying masculinity doesn't matter. On the one hand, our culture says, yes, we want fine, upstanding men who are going to be good husbands, who are going to be good fathers, who are going to be good members of the community, who are going to serve, be honest, ethical men. But at the same time, we're not prepared to give them the opportunities. We're prepared to shoot down this whole thing called chivalry, which is a very basic and fundamental way in which men can begin to show care, concern, and ethical conduct within their communities. So on the one hand, we say we want you to be ethical and caring, but on the other hand, we shoot down chivalry, which is such an important and a huge part, I think, of us as men being able to begin that process and and walk that path of being truly responsible, caring, and proactive members of our community. Earlier this year, I delivered a presentation to a group of female year 12 students. And during that presentation, I talked about the experience of holding my daughter, Lucy, my eldest daughter, for the very first time in the hospital. And I talked about how I had such profound emotional connection with my daughter in that moment, and it completely transformed me in a really good way as a man. After the presentation, one of the young female students who was there came up to me and she said, I just want to thank you for today's presentation. You've really restored my faith in in men and masculinity. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, when you shared that story about your daughter, it really uh, gave me a great sense again and restored for me the belief that men are actually capable of experiencing these deep and profound and important emotional things in their lives and that they're able, importantly, they're able to connect with these things in a way that is caring and truly loving. And I would suggest to you that that response from that young year 12 girl is typical of what most women are looking for. They're looking for men who are able to be real men, who know how to love, to care, to nurture, to provide, to shelter, to to do all those important things that women are looking for. But guess what? That starts with chivalry. And if we're not going to tolerate that in our culture, then I would suggest to you that we're going to end up with a whole lot of men who don't know how to be real men and a whole lot of very unhappy women who are looking for the perfect man that unfortunately isn't out there because our culture has said, hey, to our men, stop being real men.